Learning from Trees, what can you learn from a tree? <laughs> Strange title, I know. Trees are extraordinary plants. I'm not really surprised at the public alarm when we hear about vast forest fires de destroying millions of acres of woodland in California and other places in the world. Uh, when the gypsy moth caterpillars appear. In mass, one season, to defoliate so many acres of beautiful trees. Or when we hear of the needless destruction of trees, including the effects of polluted air or contaminated rainfall, acid rain. Or when we hear the destruction of some of the rainforests where so much yet is to be discovered in the canopy uh, over our heads in those places. How many of you have ever climbed a tree? See, you, you like trees too. They catch your attention. How could you have miss it, you know, when you're agile enough to climb one? Some blossom each spring with incredible flowers. Others provide the coolness of shade in the summer. The roots of many keep the soil from eroding, while the leaves of others clean the air and give back oxygen. From the branches of trees, we harvest some of our favorite fruits and just think of the things we construct with wood and the paper we make from its pulp. Hmm. Trees catch the imagination of artists and poets alike, and hence we have the late American poet Robert Frost who writes the poem, Tree at My Window, Window Tree. I concerned about inner weather, the tree concerned about outer weather. Great poem. And then, of course, we have Joyce Kilmer writing the poem, I think I shall never see. A poem, lovely as a tree. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts its leaf, her leafy arms to pray. A tree that, that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Confirmation class uh, one year in uh, West Haven. We took them on a, I took them actually on a tour of the community, and they all climbed a tree, all of them. And we made a video, a presentation of confirmation, uh, answering the question, where in the world is God? And one of the answers was, climb a tree and become part of it, <laughs> part of what God has created. The verses read today from both Old and New Testaments of the Bible use the powerful imagery of trees to make their point about living a deep, meaningful, fruitful life, drawing our nourishment from a dependable source that doesn't fail us even when the weather turns sour or when there is a drought. The Old Testament verses have something important to say about the roots of trees and a well-rooted life grounded in the wisdom and guidance. And in the Old Testament days, the laws and the rules and regulations of God. The New Testament verses say something important about the branches of trees, the telltale fruits they bear and how trustworthy people can be recognized by the kinds of fruits they bear. Before we draw from the sustenance of these verses, I'd like to share with you a personal story about trees. You can just apply your imagination for a moment, view yourself on the long trail as it traverses uh, up in, in Vermont, uh, traverses Mount Killington and Pico Peak near Rutland, Vermont. Years ago, one beautiful fall, a few of us from Middlebury College, uh, we had a break for a week. And with backpacks and other camping gear, we tramped through the forested area on our way to the summits of both of those mountains. And on the first half of the climb, which was an unmarked trail, we were accompanied by an official forest ranger, a woodsy bearded man who looked ancient to, ancient to us and was affectionately known as Smokey the Bear. Original, huh? <laughs> Later we came to know that we were not only with a well-seasoned guide who knew his way without a path, without a trail marked, 
but also we were with a person whose wisdom was very much part of the beauty of the woods. Later that evening, though the sky far above us still had brightness in it, we built a campfire near the edge of a mountain lake. After we talked and I ate our rations for the day and talked some more, Smokey the Bear suddenly said, Look, there, above your heads. We lay back on our sleeping bags. We looked up through the limbs of a mighty tree that was above us. All the time we'd been talking beneath this tree, we had not noticed its beauty. Against the night sky were the twisted, knotted, gnarled branches of a majestic tree with a beauty all of its own. Smokey the Bear said something very akin to this. I don't know what happened to this tree. An ice storm, wind storm, perhaps lightning at some, some time. I don't know. But I do know it, had, it has had quite a life. You can tell by its scars and the way it has grown. But isn't it interesting that it is all the more beautiful because of those things? And then he added, this tree reminds me of people I have known. They learn from their troubles. They learn what things in life really matter and what things do not. They become more compassionate, kind, understanding, and patient if they follow the right leader. Yes, sir, I've known people like this tree. They become more and more beautiful in the storms of life. This tree has character. It reminded me of our study this morning where we were talking about uh, the previous chapter where Jesus, or rather, Jesus comes to the disciples out in a boat. They are in a boat. He is on the water and asks Peter to come to him, and Peter tries. And um, Jesus is not into so much calming the storm as testing Peter's faith. God does not still all of the storms in our life, but does promise to be with us through the storms. Trees are great teachers if we notice and listen. Some years ago when our family lived out on Cape Cod, a hurricane came through and in the morning left a devastating number of locust trees lying on the ground, totally uprooted, leaning against houses, some of them, and also many majestic pine trees, still rooted but broken over halfway up their trunks. The weakness of the locust, locust trees were their shadow roots. And the weakness of the pines was in their massive trunks, unable to bend sufficiently with the wind without breaking. In the forest of human beings, which ones are likely to be greatly damaged in the storms of life? I think most likely the ones with shallow roots that have never dug down deeply enough in developing their faith into life's deeper meaning and the ones who are stiff and unbending and thereby missing new insights and discoveries about God and life along the way. Never unlocking who they really are and letting them develop as God sees their potential. The author of Psalm 1 used the tree as a teaching point. He said that those who connect their lives to the wellspring of God's wisdom and guidance for living are like trees, whose roots find their way to a stream of water that will never fail even when a drought occurs. Like a tree planted by streams of water, the writer says that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf never withers. The first condition of a good life is that it shall have deep roots. 
that it shall be well nourished with living water from a health-giving, life-giving source from the Creator. Every parent who brings a child here is concerned their parents, their children develop deep roots nourished by a living relationship with a living God from whom flow the blessings of life. Parents concerned about this also realize that their own roots must be rooted and grounded alongside the presence of the one who is always with them. That is one reason why we always ask parents of baptisms, do you also promise to be followers of Jesus yourselves? For we know that that makes a world of difference in young lives as they grow and put down roots into much the same soil in which the roots of their parents are planted. Jesus taught that a tree properly nourished will produce good fruit. And you can tell that one's life is connected to the right and proper source by the fruit it yields. Trees in their quiet eloquence tell us many things if you look and listen quietly as you gaze up through the sky, to the sky through their branches. You will learn the majesty and mystery of our Creator's presence. You will think of things like an acorn, which after years and years and years of slow but steady growth, becomes a giant oak tree. In a hurry-up world, it is good for us to notice that there is a lesson to be learned in our observing the patient, steady, consistent work of the Creator of all things, and to ponder the meaning there. Let us. Let me mention one thing more about trees that can teach us. Khalil Gibran once suggested that people should learn to give to the world around them as trees give of their fruit. Not always scrutinizing so carefully to see that the one who receives it deserves it. Gibran writes, you often say I would give but only to the deserving. The trees in your orchard say not so, nor the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to withhold is to perish. The tree does not ask, will the fruit go to the mouth of a prince or a pauper, a hero or a hobo, a nobleman or a scoundrel, a worker or a drone. There are no questions asked. No demands that the recipient be deserving, that one need only to be hungry. This is very similar to the Good Samaritan story Jesus told us when the Good Samaritan considered anyone in need to be deserving, a deserving neighbor, and a reason to give of oneself. Look carefully at trees and read your Bible. Together they have a lot to say and a lot to teach. If you listen carefully, I believe you'll have many experiences of hearing the still small voice of the Creator of all things, teaching us about the essential foundations of life and love, both here and in the life yet to come. Let us pray. Oh God, some of us have played in trees, picked fruit from trees, sat in the shade of trees and been blessed by their warmth at a fireplace. We have brought trees home for Christmas and we have planted them in our yards. Help us to gain upon them as they have been given life by your hand. And may we in listening and seeing their quiet beauty be blessed with your still small voice speaking its word through the things you have created and are creating. Blessed by your word to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.